On a YouTube video about using lessons in Thinkific, I got a question about SCORM and using SCORM lessons in Thinkific. So I wanted to show you a SCORM activity that I have here and how you can put it into Thinkific. So if you have been using SCORM before and you want to use this in Thinkific, but you're not sure how, this video is perfect for you. Or if you've heard of SCORM before and you're not really sure what it is, this video is also perfect for you to have a bit of an overview and have a look at what it includes. Now, if you want to watch more course creation videos, subscribe to my channel because each week I do put a new YouTube video on about course creation. And I go through how to use Thinkific, how to use different LMSs, how to create content. It goes through all different areas of designing, creating and launching your online course. So let's take a look. What I'm showing you here on the top here is my SCORM using Articulate Storyline. Now there's many different types of authoring tools that you can use to be able to author SCORM. SCORM is just the name of how you export content. It's a wording to say that something is SCORM compliant, meaning that it's able to read the content that you export. Once we export this, it all goes into a zip file. Now we can talk for ages about SCORM and what it does, but what I want to talk about here is how do we show this into Thinkific? And before we jump into that, for those that haven't used SCORM before, this is Articulate Storyline. And what it allows us to do is to create, let's call them slides. So here I have one scene, and in this one scene I have multiple slides. And if we go into one of these slides, we can then see what the content looks like. Now the student will then move through these slides using buttons and they would also move through on a slide, they would have different layers. And this allows them to see more content. SCORM is a really great way to be able to design interactive activities. These interactive activities, well, we can talk for ages about different types of interactive activities. We might have scenario-based learning. We might just have click and flick to reveal content. We might have quizzes, right? So these are all different types of ways that we can create interactive activities. So in some other videos that I have, I talk about passive and active participation. Passive participation is when a student might just be watching a video or when they might just be clicking buttons to reveal content. Whereas when we say active participation, they're actively using their cognitive abilities to make decisions. And there are types of scenarios. Okay, I can continue down this tangent, but let's go back to what you're here for is how do we get this into Thinkific? Now I've already published this. Now you can publish it as uh, an LMS, so you can publish it for LMSs. You can publish it in SCORM 2004. You can have different types of reporting and, and tracking. These are all, all really good for learning management systems. You can also go into the player here, which is, the, let's say, the menu or how it plays in your LMS. And here you can change things about the, the menu. Um, you can also go into other and change browser settings, so how it behaves. Now, none of that is relevant with Thinkific, okay? Now, the purpose why I say that is that you can play around with this as much as you like, but Thinkific is not SCORM compliant, which means it's not going to be able to read any of that, okay? So all of these settings that we put in, all of these different tracking decisions we put in, all these different types of um, player settings and behavior, Thinkific's not gonna be able to read that. Okay, and so this might help you with the decision. What Thinkific allows you to do is display this. So the students can move through it, no problem. The students see this exactly how you've designed it. The students can have their interactive activities, but you won't be able to see any of their data. You won't be able to see what they've moved through. Unlike other learning management systems that are SCORM compliant, uh, for example, Moodle Talent LMS is SCORM compliant, but Thinkific out of those ones, Thinkific is much more user-friendly and intuitive for your students. So if you want to show this in Think Thinkific, just publish it. I would go in and publish it with the most recent settings. So that is going in and publishing it in an LMS and publishing it for 2004 format. You can also publish this in an HTML way as well. So you can publish it for the web 
Uh, if you do publish it for the web, it's going to be on the web, right? You can um, also consider using different features of Articulate, such as Articulate Rise. I'm using Articulate Storyline, but if you use Articulate Rise, you can also export these into HTML formats for Thinkific. Right, so once we've got this exported, it's going to download as a zip file, and we want it to be in a zip file. Okay, Thinkific can only read that zip file. In the zip file, there is information about um, what's what the content includes, how it behaves. And so think if it can read that zip file, but it cannot push any information back to you. It cannot push any data back to you to see how many slides did the student go through, uh, what did they click on, what did they not, et cetera, et cetera. That's for uh, compliant, SCORM compliant LMSs. Right, enough about that. Let's assume that we've published it, which I have. I've published it and it's now in my folder. So I'm going to come here into Thinkific. This is a course that's in my test account. Okay, so you go into Thinkific, into your courses, select any course you want, and then we go into add a lesson here. When we add a lesson, we want to select this multimedia lesson. Now in this multimedia lesson, you can insert a link Okay, you can insert a hyperlink that includes the iframing or you can upload a zip file. For this example, we want to upload a zip file. Now you can only upload a zip file if you do have a paid plan. So that's something to consider as well if you are going to be using SCORM. There are ways around this, however, where you can actually host your SCORM file on a different platform such as um, Google websites. I forget the actual name of it, but on Google there is an option where you can uh, store all of this information and then you can just link it in here into Thinkific. Okay, so I'm going to upload my file that I've saved. Here it is here in my Articulate Projects folder and upload. While that's uploading, I'm just going to type in a name called SCORM Example. Okay, now in here, we can make this a preview lesson. We can make this a prerequisite. We can have discussions for this as well. They, I talk about all of these, especially preview lessons in other videos and prerequisites in other videos. If you want to check them out, they're in the description below. Okay, now that that is successfully uploaded, we are just going to click on save. Now, let's have a look at this from the student perspective. So we're going to go into preview and I'm going to go into course as enrolled student. And then we're going to have a look at what SCORM looks like. And it's going to make a little bit of sense to you of what I was speaking about at the beginning of this video. So here we have our SCORM example. It looks exactly how we expected it to. And students can move through it by clicking on these arrows. Likewise, they can also click on this menu here. They can also hide that, this menu. And in uh, your SCORM authoring tool, so I've used Storyline, I've used Articulate Storyline, we can have this setting so that the menu does not appear, right? So that's completely up to you. Sometimes it might be a bit confusing why there's two menus. Okay, maybe you do want the menu to appear so it's easier for the students to see that they have to move through several steps because we cannot turn this off. This complete and continue down the button, we cannot turn it off. We cannot disable it because Thinkific does not read any of this content that's happening Thinkific doesn't know when a student has finished this course off. If you know a little bit about SCORM, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, what I'm referring to is that when you publish a course, there's tracking options, which means you can say, when does a student complete this course? Now, in many LMSs, we can say, the student cannot continue to the next step until they've completed this. But Thinkific cannot read that information. Okay, that data isn't pushed back to Thinkific. So, we can never turn this button off and we can never disable it. It's always there. So the question that I received recently was, how do I turn this off? And we unfortunately cannot. But there are some design ideas that I want to share with you as to how you can help students move through this. So you can see here that my first slide is a welcome slide. What if my first slide was an instruction slide? and say, don't click complete continue button below, click the next button. Maybe we have an arrow that's pushing down to this next button here. In Articulate as well, rather than just having arrows, I can actually have text as well to say next or continue. Maybe we want something completely different to this complete and continue. Right? We might want a different name. Okay, so 
while we cannot turn this button off, we could think of some design ideas or some design strategies on how we can help the student understand what they have to do. So once again, maybe this first slide is an instructional slide. It could be a video. It could be um, just buttons or arrows or, or things that are directing the student to say, hey, hold on a second before you complete and continue, do these activities. That might also help you identify how you would structure your school, right? Maybe you would have your whole entire course has different school activities and maybe they are quite short. Okay, so if a student accidentally misses one, they're not going to be missing a whole wealth of information, right? Maybe they're just a, it's a small section. So if we keep them small, short and sweet and simple, that might also be useful. So what we've looked at is how you can put your SCORM course into Thinkific and then how it looks in Thinkific. We've also discussed throughout this video some positives and some negatives of using SCORM in Thinkific. To counteract those negatives, we did speak about how you can use design elements and strategies to help your students move through their course. Now, don't forget as well that you should also have a welcome video at the beginning of your course. Now, this might be a welcome video that says, hey, welcome to the course, this is what you're going to learn. But in my recent video as well, when I spoke about a course layout, which you can check out in the descriptions below, I also suggest that you have an instructions video. Okay, so it doesn't talk about what those students would learn in the course, rather it talks about what they would have access to, how they navigate the course, how they contact you if they need to, how they move through SCORM activities if they need to. Okay, so consider also on top of the design elements is to also have this instructional video. Each week I do post new videos here on my YouTube channel. So if you do have any questions about course creation, let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to create a video for you. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so you are notified of those new videos that I do post. Until next time, happy course creating. <laughs>